In this video, I'll be taking a look at the new Klipsch Forte 4 speaker and seeing how it compares to the Forte 3 it replaces. I'll cover a lot in this video, but if you want to read even more, be sure to check out our full written review on audioadvice.com, which will be linked down in the description. Now let's get started. The year 2021 is going to be a very special year for the folks at Klipsch as it represents their 75th anniversary. In 1946, Paul Klipsch sold his first speaker out of a small tin shed in Hope, Arkansas, and launched what has become one of the world's most popular speaker brands ever. Back then, Paul enlisted the help of a local cabinet maker and the Baldwin Piano Company to produce the first few speakers before hiring his first full-time employee. Today, that original location is the home to the Klipsch Museum, and Klipsch employs hundreds of music-loving people while being sold all over the globe. To celebrate the 70th anniversary of Klipsch, and due to its huge demand from their fans, Klipsch introduced their Heritage Series in 2016. The Heritage models brought back new and improved versions of most of the original Paul Klipsch designs and made Klipsch fans all over the world very happy. To celebrate their 75th anniversary, Klipsch is introducing a new Forte model, the Forte 4. We thought it would be fun to take a dive into what makes up a Forte speaker and do a comparison between the current Forte 3 and the new Forte 4. The Forte was introduced in 1985 and was a great way to get that classic Klipsch sound in a much smaller cabinet. The Forte went on to become one of the most popular clip speakers ever made, but was discontinued just five years later in 1989. When you look at a Forte next to the top of the line clip shorn, there is no question, it is far easier to fit into a room than the clip shorn La Scala or Cornwall. Even though the Forte stands at three feet tall, the ratio of its dimensions give it a smaller look that enables it to fit into most living rooms. We think it is the very best value in the Heritage Series as it sounds very big and powerful, yet can blend into a space far easier than some of the larger models. You'll have four choices of finish on the Forte 4 with grills designed to match each one. They are American Walnut, Natural Cherry, Black Ash, and Distressed Oak. Our favorite is the Oak with the light colored grill as it just has this classic retro look we feel is fitting for a speaker with a 75 year heritage. All of the Heritage Series models are made in the USA at their Hope, Arkansas factory. Their skilled craftsmen, who in some cases have been with Klipsch for decades, make each and every Heritage model by hand. Each pair is serial number matched, just like the book matched real wood veneers that grace the speaker's cabinets. You can rest assured, a Klipsch Heritage speaker will last a lifetime and be something your next generation will likely enjoy as well. The Forte 4 is a three-way design with a horn-loaded tweeter, horn-loaded mid-range, and a 12-inch woofer on the front of the cabinet. The rear has a 15-inch passive radiator. The Forte 4 is rated at 99 dB sensitivity, which makes it a super easy speaker to drive. You can push these with just about anything from a tiny tube amp to a big Macintosh or Mark Levinson solid state amp with no issues. With the ability to output an SPL level of 116 dB, these can rock. Starting with the tweeter, the Forte 4 uses a titanium compression diaphragm coupled to a patented Klipsch horn. All tweeters like to beam as the frequencies increase. Klipsch has updated the phase plug on the Forte 4 to improve the linearity of the high frequencies. This has a big positive effect on sound staging. The mid-range compression driver is a new model using a polyamide diaphragm. This driver was developed for the recent Cornwall 4. The mid-range driver is coupled to a modified Tractrix horn. The horn uses Klipsch's patented Mumps Tech, which gives you extremely even sound in the listening area. The 12-inch woofer is made of a fiber composite comb material. To extend the bass even deeper, Klipsch adds a rear-mounted 15-inch sub-bass passive radiator. Klipsch decided to voice the new Forte 4 more like their top-of-the-line Klipsch horn and La Scala speakers. These use a steeper crossover slope than the other models. They also upgraded the quality of the components used in the crossover. While you'll never see a speaker crossover, it is a critical link in the chain as it splits up the incoming signal and sends different frequencies out to the different drivers. From the tech Klipsch is using in this new crossover network, it appears to be first class. 
We love the solid binding posts on the rear that are big enough for some massive speaker cables and are set up for by wiring if you wish. Now, let's see how the Forte 4 technically compares to the Forte 3. We love the fact that Klipsch, like just a small handful of other speaker manufacturers who actually make their own speaker drivers, spells out the actual driver name they use for the speaker components. This makes it easier to compare model to model and see what the changes are as they improve things. Both the Forte 3 and the Forte 4 use the K100 T1 one inch titanium diaphragm compression driver on the K79T horn. The phase plug was changed on the Forte 4 for a more linear high frequency dispersion. The mid range gets some big changes as the new Forte 4 uses the same compression driver developed for the more expensive Cornwall 4. The driver is the K702 model, while on the Forte 3 they use the K70 model that uses a titanium diaphragm as compared to the polymide material on the K702 version. We should point out, Klipsch also uses polymide for the tweeter diaphragm in the La Scala and Klipsch horn. Both the Forte 3 and Forte 4 use the same K703M horn. The woofer and passive radiator are identical on the Forte 3 and Forte 4. Klipsch made some big changes to the crossover network using more expensive components in the crossover network and changing the slope to more closely match what they do in the La Scala and Klipsch horn. It appears the goal was to get the sound of the Forte 4 to be closer to a clip shorn. While the Forte 4 is a quarter inch shorter in height than the Forte 3, this is due to the redesign of the base the speaker sits on. All new Forte 4 color versions have the same matte black base. I set up the Forte 4 and Forte 3 up at our listening room to both check out how the Forte 4 sounded and see how it compared to the Forte 3. I did an asymmetrical setup so that each speaker would be the same distance apart and in the rectangular room would just be a mirror image on distance from the sidewalls. I used a Macintosh stack to power them. It's always important when comparing things to perfectly matched levels, which was a cinch with these as the two have exactly the same sensitivity. I decided to make this an all analog comparison and pulled out some classic records from years gone by, which of course plays right into the legacy behind the Forte. I picked records that really focused on the mid-range and imaging because that's where I expected to hear most of the differences between the Forte 3 and the Forte 4. First, it's totally clear the Forte 4 is an evolution of the Forte 3. The sound profile between the two is similar, but the differences I heard were pretty big to my ears. On the first track I played from the Getz Gilberto Girl From Ipanema song, I heard a big difference in just how much more effortless the voices and saxophones sounded on the Forte 4. When I flipped back to the Forte 3, they almost sounded strained. The title cut from Amanda McBroom's Dreaming was even bigger. Her voice floated in space and sounded very natural on the Forte 4, and when I switched back and forth to the Forte 3, I felt her voice almost had a coloration to it. My theory is the new mid-range driver and steeper crossover slopes are a much better match to the horn itself. Next up were the Persuasions, who are an acapella group, and I heard the same differences in the mid-range improvements, but even more so with multiple voices going on at the same time. On every single cut I tried up to this point, the stereo image was also wider and deeper and more precise in space on the Forte 4. But when I switched to the next album, that difference became huge. The old Neophonic String Band album is a great bluegrass record. On the Forte 4, everything was perfectly in space, spread out very well. When I switched back to the Forte 3, it was like the image just went back into the two speakers. Needless to say, I was very impressed with the new Forte 4. I did not even cover here how both models have great bass impact and have such a high sensitivity you can run them with a very small amp. I have to give Klipsch some kudos for taking a speaker that was already really good and making it much better in my opinion. The Klipsch Heritage series covers a wide range of products from the Heresy to the top of the line Klipsch horn. With the new changes, the Forte 4 sounds a lot more like the top of the line Klipsch horn than it did before. I think this makes it the very best value in the Heritage Series by far and should be on the list of anyone who wants to recreate the feeling of a live band in your home. And what music lover would not want to do that? Like I said earlier, be sure to check out our full written review if you want an even deeper dive into these speakers. And if you have any questions on these or any other home audio or home theater gear, always give us a call, chat with us on audioadvice.com 
or stop by one of our Raleigh or Charlotte, North Carolina locations. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you never miss the latest home audio and home theater content. We'll see you next time.